Bangalore was known as a air conditioned city. It was a cool city. That is because in 1800, temperature in the Bangalore was 14 to 16 degrees Celsius in the May month. And today in the May month, we have reached 40. You know, that clearly shows that there is something has going very, you know, it's a disaster for the city. Now, coming back to the relationship between the temperature and the urbanization. See, in 92, the, where the buildings were there, the temperature was 19 degrees. Where water bodies are there, it is about 15 degrees. And where vegetation are there, it's around 12 degrees. Okay, this shows that vegetation water body acts as a heat sink. So I would say that the increase in temperature in the recent time is just because of this senseless urbanization that has happened in the city. You know, 1005% growth in concrete area, you know, building, road, etc. We lost 88% of vegetation and 79% of water bodies. Now, because of that, you know, this vegetation acts as a heat sink and also water body acts as a heat sink. They moderate the climate. So that's why wherever you see the vegetation, for example, this campus, my campus, temperature is two degree lower. And in this area, it's four degree lower than the city's temperature. You know, now, for example, you looked at the ISC campus, the centenary pond, the pond what we created in 2008. See, that pond not only gives me, stores the 10 lakh liters of water, it also has become an open lab for my students. My students monitor the, that pond and whatever the algae that is grown, diatom, we are trying to see the prospects of biofuel. So that way, you know, the nature does its own way of helping the system. When we created the water body, we didn't know what are the benefits we are going to get. But today you see that, okay, the benefit is not only it recharges the groundwater, it also has additional benefit of, it has given me the lab the open lab for the, my students. Forest, what we created in the two hectare land. We got about 49 species from Western Ghats. In an area of about two hectares, about 500 saplings. This was planted in 89. And today, I have a rainforest there. You know, over a period of 25 years, you see that there's a rainforest in there. It has got a diversity. We created only the plants, diverse plants. But you have now the birds, the butterfly, the snakes, everything is there in place. And also there is a four families of slender lorries is there. So these are the kinds of additional benefit you are going to get. And coming back to your question of water. See, we have monitored the groundwater table in the immediate vicinity of this region where that open wells are there, the water table was hardly 150 feet. Today, you have the water at 10 to 15 feet. That means, I would say the vegetation has helped in the retaining the water, and also it has helped in recharging the groundwater solution. So because of that, the groundwater table has improved in these locations. You know, my assessment, we have done the visualization of growth. By 2020, 94% of the, our landscape will be concretized by any means. I would say that is an unrealistic, tragic growth. Our children will not have air, clean air, clean water and environment. So that is against the Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. We are at Delhi Darwaza. If you are aware of this place, you know where we are heading to. If not, we are entering the famous Darya Ganj market. From starting up a legal practice at a time when it was unheard in India to today becoming a force to reckon with. 